Okay, I just want to go over the basic drill grinding right now. Uh, first of all, you set the work head to the angle that you want to grind. By loosening a lever here, you can swing the head to whatever angle you want to set. In this case, I'm going to set it at 118 degrees. Lock the head in place here. And for doing the right hand drills, use the number 4 cam, which fits right on here. And you also use the oscillation on the head. Now you always use the oscillation for drill pointing. For other operations, you do not use the oscillation. The oscillation is engaged by pulling a pin in in the back and locking it tight. And I should always be locked tight because if it is a little bit loose, it can the head can wobble slightly and cause chatter on drill. To start setting up, there's several notches here on the work head. You set it in the right hand slot, or right hand drill. Chuck key in. Put the tool in the chuck and then lightly clamp down on it. Slide in the setting blade from the side here. Rotate the lip of the blade onto this step. You set the drill out by a sixteenth of an inch drill diameter. So in this case, I have a half inch drill, so I would set it at eight position. And that should be held right down on there. And then tighten the chuck, pull the blade back, and the drill is set. And you can unlatch. You can see the action you're going to get on the drill. The other consideration here is setting the amount of heel relief on a drill. Now in our manual we have recommended settings for different size drills and different angles, so you can use that as a guideline. In this case I have a half inch drill, 118 degrees. I'll be setting the relief drop at 12. That's done by moving the lever here. It's a ball detent, so you have to sort of pop the handle with your hand to make it move into the next hole. So I'm bringing the grinding wheel into position. Bring in close using the in-feed and cross-feed. Switch on. Then just in-feed as you're turning the crank. Just keep your crank moving at a fairly constant speed. Feeding in about one or two thousandths for every time you turn the crank. And once you have the drill ground, just turn it over slowly and let it spark out. Then move the grinding wheel back out of the way. Turn the motor off and just put your latch right back in this right hand slot. Take the drill out and now you're ready to start the next drill. For the taper shank drills, use these rear steadies. You simply put the taper shank in this holder and that uses the rear steady. These slide right in the back of the machine, right up through the hole in the back of the work head and open the chuck. Again, bring the drill out through the chuck and set the lip of the drill out here by eight by sixteenths of an inch drill diameter and tighten the chuck. Now these are namely used for larger drills. Also if you have large straight shank drills about over three quarters an inch, there's a cone type rear steady that you can use also. That slides up in the back and you push the drill in from the front up against the, the cone inside to steady it. I'm do a little different type of grind on this drill. It's called a plunge grind. Now this is done if you have a large drill that you have a lot of material to take off or if you have a, a drill that's badly damaged. Switch on, bring the drill in until it sparks, then bring the grinding wheel past the tip of the drill and on your in-feed dial feed in about a ten thousandths of an inch.
to feed the grinding wheel right across the drill. And you just continue doing that until the drill is sharp. And then all you have to do is feed the wheel out a little bit. Reset your chuck, and then you can pull it right out the back. This segment we're doing grinding a left-hand drill. Grinding a left-hand drill is, uh, is pretty much the same as grinding a right-hand drill. The main difference is you use a different cam. In this case, you use a number one cam for two flute twist drill. Push the head forward. Slip the cam on. And instead of putting the right-hand slot, you'll put it in the left-hand slot. And in setting the drill up, is pretty much the same too. You're going to go out by sixteenths of an inch drill diameter, but in this case you're going to be rotating the lip up to the setting blade instead of down to the setting blade. So at the same, actually the cutting edge is to level with the step, what is going to be coming from below. And tighten it, pull it back, and instead of cranking clockwise like you do for the right hand drill, you're going to crank counterclockwise. When you're grinding the drills, you have to keep in mind uh, the fact that if you grind too much off the drill, you start to change the timing of your grinding. So if you grind too much off, the heel of the drill will start to come up into the, into the air. Now, one, one way you can prevent that, if you have a drill that has a margin that's badly damaged or it's chipped, you would set the drill out a little further and down a little lower so that you're going to grind back to the good amount of material and that at that point that will be the point that you should be setting it on the setting blade and then this eliminates having to reset but if you can say the drill is broken off and there's no really no good reference point just rough grind it reset it and then grind it again